this week in Jamaica now. Keep your just to yourself. No, on your yard. No, no, yes, come on my tour. Everald Warmington again in hot water. Man who killed accounting clerk Kenneth Jackson gets life in prison. Cabinet shakeup in the air and enhanced strategies to combat beryllium attacks. I'm Edmund Campbell and this is Jamaica Now. Robert Fowler, the St. Catherine man who strangled accounting clerk Kenneth Jackson and dumped her body in a ditch, will have to spend over 22 years in prison for his crime. High Court Judge Justice Leighton Pusey on Thursday imposed the mandatory sentence of life in prison and ordered Fowler to serve 22 years and 11 months before being eligible for parole. Fowler pleaded guilty to murder on March 8. Jackson's decomposing body was found in a ditch along Dyke Road in St. Catherine on March 26, 2021, two days after family members reported her missing. Jackson's family says her killer's sentence cannot make up for their loss. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has been called on to sanction Minister Without Portfolio with Responsibility for Works, Everald Warmington, for what has been described as his continued arrogant and boorish behavior. Mr. Warmington and People's National Party PNP Councillor Caretaker for the Fellowship Division in Portland, Colin Bell, had a heated exchange on Wednesday as the government minister insisted that he should not accompany him on a tour of the area. I'm a citizen of this country well, and I have interest in this Keep your interest area. to yourself. No. And your yard. No. Don't come on my tour. Interest. Don't come on my tour. May I share my interest? I don't need you here. Eh? I'm here with the member of parliament. That's enough. Well, I am here. You say consult me? I am here. Me not tour with consult me. Tour with the mayor. I am here. All right, tour with the mayor. I am here. So where, where, who invited you? I'm a citizen of this Only country. Only she, Daphne and Sly, when I'm invited. Well, guess what? PNP Vice President and Spokesperson for Works, Mikhail Phillips, says Warmington's behavior towards Bell was unwarranted and undemocratic. He said wholeness should ensure there is no recurrence of this episode anywhere in Jamaica. Opposition Senator Peter Bunting says he will not sign the Integrity Commission's Leadership Code of Conduct. This as he still takes issue with a special report put out last year by the body regarding the issuance of gun permits. The Commission's report cited Bunting, who was National Security Minister between 2012 and 2016, for granting a license to a man whose United States records for drug trafficking were expunged. At the time, Bunting hit back, stating that the Commission, in its final report, left out important parts of his submission relating to the role of the Firearm Review Board, which would have clarified the issues. Bunting says he maintains this position, arguing that the information contained in the Commission's report has negatively impacted his reputation. He said until the Commission addresses his concerns, he will continue to limit his interactions with the entity. At the same time, 11 of his colleagues have already inked the document. The Andrew Holness-led administration appears to be on the cusp of a major cabinet shakeup. Highly placed sources say junior Foreign Minister Leslie Campbell has rebuffed two offers to take up diplomatic posts overseas in exchange for his Senate seat. Campbell was reportedly offered the High Commissioner post in the United Kingdom, which he rejected. He also turned down an offer to go to Germany. And reports have emerged that Dr. Sophia Longmore has been offered a posting in Belgium and that permanent secretary in the office of the Prime Minister, Audrey Sewell, is being tipped to become cabinet secretary. Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Horace Chang refused to be drawn on the new assignments, including the potential changes at the executive and cabinet levels. <laughs> Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says Jamaicans are dying younger. Speaking in the sectoral debate in the House of Representatives on Tuesday, Tufton said 59% of the deaths in 2020 were people who died before their 75th birthday. This represents when you calculate the life years lost. So let's assume that 75 is the average. If someone lives to 70, we calculate five life years lost. And we do that for all who die before 75, because 75 is the average life expectancy. When we calculated the life years lost in the year 2020, what we found that as a country, we had some 296,000 life years lost because of what I classify as premature mortality, premature death. 
But worse, Madam Speaker, and this is the point, it represents, it represents a 19% increase in the potential life years lost a decade ago, 10 years ago. In other words, Madam Speaker, in other words, and simply put, Jamaicans are dying younger. Tufton says his ministry will roll out an initiative this year aimed at getting people to know their health status and how to adjust behavior to reduce illness and premature death. Dubbed Know Your Numbers, the Healthy Lifestyle Initiative is seeking to get 500,000 screening tests done this year. A specialized multidisciplinary investigation team has been established to go after criminal groups that have been targeting automated teller machines, ATMs, and cash in transit operations. This is among enhanced strategies to combat attacks on guards of security company Beryllium. The most recent incident happened a week ago when gunmen attacked Beryllium guards who were attempting to service an ATM at a gas station in Albion, St. Thomas. Additionally, a more robust communication regime has been established between Beryllium and the Jamaica Constabulary Force to facilitate real-time support and response. Further, the government is to move to expedite amendments to the Private Security Regulation Authority Act to enable further specialized training and equipping of security officers. And with King Charles III being crowned on Saturday, residents of Rosetown in Kingston have expressed deep appreciation for his continued investment in the development of their community. Executive Director of the Rosetown Foundation for the Built Environment, Ruth Janke, told the Gleaner that King Charles III was very impressed with the work being done by residents to rebuild the community. The Princess Foundation for Building Community is a United Kingdom-based charity, which began working with residents in 2004 and in 2010. The Rosetown Foundation's first major project with the Princess Foundation was the reopening of Harris Street and the installation of water and sewerage mains. The Princess Foundation also helped Rosetown to secure international funding from the Canadian government to renovate Rollins Enterprise Center. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page. Turn on your notification and subscribe today. I'm Edmund Campbell and before we go, Justice Minister Delroy Chuck, in his contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament, reminded same-sex couples seeking to get married in Jamaica that such unions are not permitted in the island. Marriage licenses is another area that the Ministry of Justice is involved with. Last year, we issued 8,313 licenses and we provided the Minister of Finance or the Tax Administration Jamaica with 33,252,000. We are doing well, Madam Speaker, but we don't mind more marriages so we can provide more, uh, more money to the Ministry of Finance. Uh, that's not a way to look at it. Right. Stability no, but in truth, Madam Speaker, we enjoy when people come for their marriage license because it means that a family will be created hopefully, or at least husband and wife. Madam Speaker, we have had people coming in now. We, we have to make be clear and make it, let it be clear. We do not support same-sex marriage as yet, <laughs> or ever. <laughs> the truth of the matter, people have been coming asking us for marriage license for two same-sex. This is, at the moment is not permissible. Fine? But Madam Speaker, we are able to say that 99.9% .9 of the applications are dealt with within 24 hours. Where there is a problem is where there's a divorce. We have to wait and make sure that the divorce is not fraudulent because we have had that problem before, Madam Speaker. So we check with the, the Supreme Court to ensure that the divorce is a valid one.